Welcome back, cocksucker, to another episode of Let's Play the Shit Out of the Death Gate Cycle. Last episode, we broke this bitch in twine and stole her green fucking necklace. Now it's mine. Alright, it's a good time to save the game, if I say so myself, cocksucker. Let's, let's check out this hand hog. Wall thingy. You have to be holding the high synth hand before you put it in the opal hand. Ruby. Ruby marble. H H is there an A? Is there an A here? Umber. Bloodstone. I'm fucking confused. We're reading this letter now from the hands here. By their time to die. push the bloodstone and then let's push the topaz 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 diamond by their hands to die by their time to die what are you doing out of the initiation room oh jesus we don't look kind we're getting fucking killed. There's no S. By their time to die. The second one reads. No S stone. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fucking confused. About the first five letters B U Y T H B U Y T H. <sighs> you lick my asshole. That's got to be right.
I don't know what the fuck's going on. You got me, motherfucker. B U Y T H E I R You suck my asshole. Reload. Let's try this. B T-H-E T-H-E I R Are you fucking kidding me? What are you doing out of the initiation room? I don't know what the fuck's going on. But I'm getting fucking pissed off, nigga. By their time... If you have to spell this whole thing out, but that's fucking ridiculous. Bye. What are you doing up? Got me, asshole. Confused, go fuck yourself. Okay, I figured it out. Each word here corresponds with a continent. Uh, when we looked through the window earlier, we saw Aristagon. So, we actually only have to spell the word die. So, diamond... Iron Emerald. Do -do -do. The emerald hand slides into the wall and then pops out again. You hear a quiet rumble, like hidden gears turning. Slowly, the wall splits and swings open to reveal a hidden chamber beyond. Yeah. Are you fucking serious? Do I gotta do this? But I'm not doing no more lock picking. Kick your ass. For a treasure room, this chamber is surprisingly bare. Its only distinguishing feature is a platform in the center. You step onto a wide platform to get a better view of the entire room. You lay the crystal necklace on the pedestal into the indentations that frame the flattened top. Light erupts from the pedestal and soon envelops the entire chamber. When your eyesight is cleared, you notice the room is filled with treasure, coins, gems, of course, but also ancient artifacts of an estimable value. <laughs> Holy shit, alright, you think to yourself. You grab the leather-bound book and return to your perch. You take the book of Pyran. We take the handbook. Take the crystal globe. On your way back, you slip on some loose gems lying on the floor. You fall headfirst in the hard surface. The impact stirs an involuntary yelp of pain. The noise echoes through the main hall, and before you can get to your feet, the guard comes bursting in the chamber, led by Hume. I like you. You're a thief after my own heart. 
Unfortunately, we can't suffer someone who's trying to steal from the Brotherhood to live. I'll try to make this as painless as possible. He draws out a wicked dirk and shoves it up your asshole. I'm not done taking shit, to be honest. You snatch the key crystals from the pedestal. This causes the contents of the room to be transported back to the space between realities. Fortunately for you, this doesn't include the person standing on the platform. Unfortunately for Hugh and the God, this happens to include them. Where an expression of disbelief, they fade away along with the remainder of the treasure. Sweet. Hey, guess what, Hugh? Catch you later, dick licker. Good time to fucking save. I just robbed and mobbed a bitch. I can't believe it. You got out of the tower alive. No thief has ever survived. Fuck yeah, son. We've got to get out of here. Skirvash isn't safe for either of us. The Brotherhood rules this city, and they'll kill us when they find us. You race back to the elven ship with the street rat in tow. King Stephen's troop captain hauls up the rope ladder, and you climb aboard. A few hand signals, and the captain send the crew scurrying, and shortly the ship lifts off. And you're like, peace out, bitches! Back to Drevlin. I've decided to stay on board until we reach the Valkyrian Isles, where Steven rules. I think I can live much better in human lands. I'll need these to get started. You understand, I'm sure. He flashes an evil smile and grabs the lockpick and pry bar from you. Smiling, you climb down the ladder and wander into the dwarven caverns. From that vantage, you watch the ship depart into the stormy sky. You take inventory of your possessions and know that the rat has also lifted the necklace of key crystals. Little cocksucker motherfucker. Ah, back in the broom closet. Let's give the candle holder to Dick Licker. I mean, Lim Limbeck. This is much better than the pipe I was using. It's very thoughtful of you to offer it. He gingerly removes the candle from the straight pipe, hands the pipe over to you, and jams the candle into the holder. Enthralled, he sets it down on the corner of the table, admiring the holder and completely forgetting about the pipe. Oh, look at this old bastard. What the heck do you want, you overgrown, dim-witted god wannabe? And speak up! Oh, hell no, you didn't just say that, bitch. Are you Grapple Rock Digger? No, my name's not Grupal Pot Licker, you rockhead. I'm Grapple Rock Digger. Who's asking? That's what I said, Grapple Rock Digger. Can't you hear very well? What did you say? Speak up. I can't hear very well. I said your name was Grapple Rock Digger. I know my name is Grapple Rock Digger, Dirt Rag. I told you that. My name is Haplo. Flappo? Interesting name. I wouldn't want to be saddled with it, though. Even Flappo is a better name than Grapple Rock Digger. Then it's a good thing my name isn't Apple Snot Finger. Sheesh. I'm a god. Answer my questions or suffer the consequences. A god, eh? Well, you can just go right back to whatever you came from and to blazes with your questions and consequences. You again? I thought even someone as thick as you... I don't want anything, you squat, ugly old dwarf. Then why are you wasting my time? Get out of here, you festering pile of refuse! I'm gonna kick your fucking ass, you long-bearded piece of donkey shit! This guy's got a mouth on him like a little shit stump. Be this little fucking punk ass. Hmm. We'll just take this here. The old dwarf crumbles, but does nothing to stop you from taking the pipe. You again? 
I thought even someone as thick as you would realize that I don't want to talk to you. What is it this time? Why are you sitting beneath that dripping black gunk? I'm not moving until the kicksy winsy is fixed, and that's final. If dripping gunk isn't going to make me move, you sure aren't. Nice stool. There's no pool around here. What are you, blind? No, I said stool. What are you, deaf? Can't understand a word you said. New to the language, are you? This must be a bad time. I'll talk with you later. Fine. I'll just sit here under my broken pipe. You go have a nice life. This guy's fucking annoying. There we go, it's a little pipe puzzle. Look, and they rotate. Yeah, they're not gonna do much if they got shit in the way. You fucking genius. Imagine that, I'm out of fucking pieces. You again? Could I ask you a few questions? Listen, I'm sitting under a broken pipe that's dripping black goo on my head, and the gods have commanded oh, every- Oh, just shut the fuck up! Why don't you fix the pipes? It's not my job to fix it. it I'm looking for a seal piece. I, I may have seen something like that. Doesn't matter, though. You obviously want to see it for yourself, and that's impossible. As I recall, there used to be a tunnel that led where you want to go, but the Kixie Winsy filled it up a long time ago. There's no way to get there anymore. If the Kixie Winsy filled in the tunnel, couldn't it just as easily dig another? <laughs> and how are you going to convince the Kixie Winsy to dig where you want it to go? The gods have been trying to control it for years, and they've gotten nowhere. Besides, I'm not going to tell you where it is until my pipes are repaired. Fact is, I've said too much already. What about that box labeled pipe repair on the floor? Everybody's rummaged in that box taking what they want without regard for the fact that the Kixie Winsy might actually need it. At one time, there were five pipe fittings in the box. Now there aren't any. Tell you what, if I repair your pipe, will you tell me what I need to know? Why not? Fix my pipes and I'll answer your questions afterwards. As long as the guards are gone as well. I don't think very well with all of these walking lamps about. Wait a second. What exactly are you holding in your ear? It helps me hear. It's, it's a pipe fitting. I guess I got it from the box. I don't think the pipe helps your hearing all that much. Can I have it? Very well, as long as I have your word that you'll use it to repair my pipes. Will there be anything else? Who cares about your plumbing problems? I think you're personally blocked up. Constipation would answer a lot of questions about your personality. I do. Now go away and let me care all by myself. All right, now the dumb shit is just holding his fucking hand up to his ear. Good. Look at the fucking pipes again. Put the fucking pipe in the right place. Put. What the 
fuck? Would you look? This is fucking stupid. Yeah, whatever. Like I said, fucking stupid. Drop it. Oh, this is terribly complicated. You carefully set all the fittings in place and make a connection between the two ends of broken pipe section. Looks rather bizarre, but appears stable. You know the deal. I'm not talking with you. I fixed it, asshole. Shut the fuck up. You know the deal. I'm not talking with you. <laughs> the valve produces a squeal as you turn it, which is soon accompanied by a low rumble. The old dwarf looks up excitedly when a spurt of black gunk spews out of the remaining tea opening and smacks him square in the eye. While he bellows at you, you quickly return the vowel back to its original position. Uh, let's put a cork in it. You wedge the cork in the exposed end of the T-pipe fitting. Alright, let's try this again. This is a geological survey map of the entire continent. Let me look at it. Here, here's what I discovered that statue with the symbol. It was in this vein of iron ore. He grabs the map, squinting at it as he studies it. After a bit of mumbling, he traces his finger over the page. I remember that vein clearly. I saved a lump of the ore somewhere. Look closely at the grain. That vein was one of the best. He continues to ramble on about the old days. Well, you've stopped paying close attention. Alright. You got the pipes fixed. Nothing worse than having your pipes leaking. The massive control panel dominates the wall. This must be the brains of the Kixney Winsy. Very interesting. Very interesting little shithole. Bizarre object sits idle on the floor. It's like a giant drill. I don't know how the fuck to control it. Pixie Winsy, control, diggers, Pixie Winsy. The controls are many and varied. A compartment draws attention to itself. Oh, there's a compartment. Let's put the ore in the compartment. As soon as you slip a piece of iron ore into the small compartment, the door slams shut. Lights flare and the whistles blare all over the panel. Behind you, the giant digger machine chuffs. Its drill jerks into motion and starts to spin, gradually increasing speed. Puffs of steam toot and hiss randomly from holes. When the drill is no more than a blur, the whole machine trundles toward the wall, and it melts into the wall as if it were butter! Soon it disappears from sight, leaving a dark tunnel behind. HOLY SHIT! A tall statue of a sot is surrounded by crystal caskets. A roughly hewn tunnel runs off to the west. Gingerly, you place the crystal globe in the pleading hands of the statue. As it clinks into place, the statue's eyes alight with blue fire. 
Shafts of the light pierce down to the globe. Internal facets distort the light as it passes through the crystal, so that when it has emerged from the other side, the light outlines a hexagonal shape on the ground. The ground shakes. The section of rock floor outlined by the blue light melts away, and Ariana's seal piece rises in its place. Suddenly, the crystal coffins open, revealing hundreds of Sartan, all very dead. The entire experience is rather macabre. Look at us, we are all dead. Now give us some head. Let's go ahead and take the air seal piece here. And I would say it's time to return to the Nexus. We have done all we can here. Yeah. You take the driver and chick back through the death gate and return to the Nexus. Here I come, Nexus, here I come. Welcome back, my son. I see you've been successful. You have Arianus's seal piece. Congratulations. Now, please give me a report. I'll give you a report, asshole. That place fucking sucks! You hand over the seal piece and describe your adventures in Arianus in detail. Most of your antics of the mensch seem to bore Lord Zar, but he pays rapt attention to the discovery of the reference book of Pyron and the crystal coffins holding hundreds of Sartan corpses. Amazing. The only Sartan you find are long dead. I wonder if someone has stolen our vengeance from us, or if their consciences did them in. I will have to consider this new information. Now, was there anything else before you use your newfound book to go on to Priam, Realm of Fire? You know, Arianus was not a prison. The Mensch weren't slaves. Most of their problems were of their own making. Perhaps the Sartan knew what they were doing? <sighs> My son, of course, it may appear to be that way. Naturally, the Mensch weren't rebelling against the Sartan. According to your own report, the Sartan there are dead. Believe me, if the Sartan had been alive, they would have been grinding the Mensch under their heels. We are doing them a favor by removing the Sartan threat forever, or confirming its absence, and finally taking over the reins of their lives. The Sartan were right about one thing. The Mensch do need guidance. They're like children. Listen to your own report. Their squabbles are almost laughable. When we finally bring the world together, we shall give them the leadership that they so sorely need. What do you suppose killed the Sartan? They all looked fairly young. I'm not sure. Perhaps a plague. Although I've never heard of a plague so selective that it wipes out an entire race and leaves others untouched. I don't think we have enough information yet. Hopefully you will learn more in your travels. Can you tell me anything about your research? The book I'm reading now is titled The History of the Sundering. Not only is it woefully inadequate, but it was improperly stored and moisture has damaged many of the pages. The book discusses the six Sartan responsible for the plan. Sama, Dimitri, Orsef, Lornoy, Tyler, and Weyleth. Each created a specific spell, and for reasons I won't go into, it is vital that I learn which spell each Sartan created. The book did have that information once, but the water destroyed it. So I've been forced to do quite a bit of research on each person. I've divined much about their personalities from other texts. I'm hoping that this will tell me what kind of spell they would be likely to create. I've become very familiar with each of them, and I've named them the Six Devils. Each is a devil in a unique way. 
It gives you a piercing look, as if to underscore how vital it is for you to understand the enemy. Tell me about Sama. I call Sama the Devil of the Soul. He was insidious. Although the Sartan Council was theoretically democratic, Sama could talk them into anything. In fact, there was much dissension on the Council when the plan was discussed. Many felt that it was too extreme, but Sama thundered right through the contrary arguments. The rest is history. What did you learn about Dimitri? I know Dimitri as the Devil of the Hand. He was very skilled at a variety of arts and was a talented musician. It's said that his interests were very diverse, and he resented the time he was forced to spend on the Council. Who is Orsef? Orsef is the Devil of the Heart. It is closest to the soul, and in truth, Orsef was Sama's closest advisor. He spent much time among the Mensch, studying them. The Mensch fascinated Orsef for some reason. It was he who was placed in charge of overseeing the transportation of the Mensch into the Four Realms. Can you tell me about Lornoy? I call Lornoy the Devil of the Eye. He was one of the few that saw the many problems with the plan. He was the leader of the pitiful opposition. I guess it shows how pitiful indeed the opposition was, that Lornoy was one of the instrumental participants in the plan. Sama must have talked swiftly to convince him. Tell me about Tyler. Tyler is the devil of the mind. He was the youngest and quickest of all six Sartan. If not for him, the plan might never have occurred. Although he was very ambitious, he wasn't nearly the politician that Sama was. Sama used him, as he used everyone to further his own plans. Who is this Waylith? I refer to Waylith as the Devil of the Tongue. Sama knew that Waylith was a skilled speaker and well-liked, perhaps almost as good a politician as he. He kept Waylith from the council for that very reason, and was fortunate that Waylith had no political aspirations. Otherwise, he might have had a fight on his hands. Can I take a look at that book? I'm afraid not. It's so damaged now that I have to keep special care of it. I never move it from this desk, and I turn the pages only with reluctance. I'm sorry. Let's go back to some other topic. Of course. What do you want to know? That's a bit suspicious, my friend Zar. Can we talk about some of the subjects you touched on earlier? Of course. What do you want to know? That's enough for right now. I'd like to talk to you later if you don't mind. Very well. I'll be here. Alright folks, that wraps it up for this video. And tomorrow we shall continue on this adventure and visit the world of fire. Known as Pyron. Till then, thanks for watching.